before we get started, we brought gifts to bribe your, your attention. <laughs> Sugar and carbs. So uh, there's donuts, there's um, bagels, as well as coffee. So please help yourself. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you get up in the middle of it and have to have to reload either caffeine or sugar. Uh, my name's Jeff Cartledge, and uh, even though my probably lack of presence sometimes around here, you didn't you may have not seen me as often. Um, I've been your rep for the last I don't know year or two, and and we're having a transition here. And Wes Voorhees is going to be your new rep. So what we're going to do today is we're going to sort of um, I'm going to do most of the presenting, but Wes is going to chime in to um, get to introduce you to everybody and uh, talk about a bunch of new products. We've got a ton. Of new products, and uh, I don't know a few guys have come up to our um, our plan, our corporate office, a couple weeks ago, and they may have brought some of that information back. But most likely, no one Vicky kept it to himself. Um, I didn't get it. That's right. So uh, <laughs> so he can make all the sales. But that's that's our job is try to get you excited about the new stuff that's coming down the pike, and um, and just sort of get you in the loop. Any questions are are definitely good. There's no dumb questions. There's no bad questions. So please. Feel free to interrupt at any time, and if I say something that doesn't make sense, stop me. I want to make sure we're having some good uh, interaction. So, anything before I start? Any issues? Any questions before I go? We're going to start a little bit with a little bit of background about, about Rustoleum because I know you probably see it in Home Depot and Lowe's and wonder, well, what's what do they have? What do we have? Rustoleum is broken up into two different groups: the consumer group and the industrial group. Obviously, IPS and, and, and myself and Wes, we're in the industrial group. We sell through distribution. Uh, we do not call on Home Depot, Lowe's, or anything like that. The consumer group is a totally standalone group. Okay, so they can they sell a variety of really household items primarily. You can order pretty much whatever they have. Um, you, you can get access to that. They cannot necessarily get access to everything that we sell. Uh, there's a lot of industrial products that require some specialty installation, stuff like that. So there are some differences from a price perspective. Obviously, Lowe's and Home Depot are two biggest customers in Australia. Uh, so they have really good prices. So if we're competing against them, we'll be close, but we're probably not going to be quite as low. We want to try to take business away from the competitors. You know, the Sherman Williams, the Crylons, the Seymour's, people like that, as opposed to just uh, transferring, transferring dollars. By the way, hello everybody online too. Sorry, <laughs> don't, don't want to forget you. Uh, hopefully, you can see the the screen. A little bit about the size of the market. Uh, the paint uh, or industrial coating segment is a pretty big segment, okay? And you're talking about billions and billions of dollars. So, from a market share standpoint, it grows about five percent a year, three to five percent. So we don't have huge growth like tech stocks or something like that. We're not going to have that huge growth. A lot of it is taken away from our competitors. And I know selling through industrial distribution sometimes people get frustrated and think, well, they're going to buy from a paint store. You know, they're, we, have, we have a hard time competing. The reality of it is, if you look at this, this pyramid, it sort of breaks down the, uh, the market and how the, the buying process goes through. Really only 20% of that, what was it, almost $4 billion does not come out or comes out of that paint set store segment where it's paint store to contractor nobody else gets involved okay and then there's another 40% uh, where they sell right to the property owner okay but there's 40% of the whole market which is well over a billion um, where we can sell directly to that owner and that's where we really succeed that's that that's our bailiwick you guys have those relationships with the property owners, um, with the end users, and we come in and we sell that. So there, there is a ton of business out there for, for the taking. I'm going to talk about some products today that every, just about every plant that you have is going to need to, need to use, and TurboCrete is one of them. This is a product that's, that's, um, that goes with concrete. It's a three component product, so it's got a, a hardener and a resin, you mix together a liquid, then you add a, uh, an aggregate to it, an aggregate blend. It's not just like playground sand. They've got uh, round edges to them so they compact really well. Um, you may have heard the term, anybody, 100% solids epoxy 
is a common term. Well, what does that mean? It means it doesn't have any solvent in it. So there's no mineral spirits, there's no lacquer thinner, there's no water, there's no solvent in it at all. So that means it has really no odor or offensive odor. If you stick your face down in it, you're probably going to smell a little something. Um, but it also means it doesn't shrink it's because there's nothing to evaporate. It has a chemical reaction. You put it into the hole or, or whatever you're patching, um, and, it, uh, and it doesn't shrink. When you're going into a, a, or talking to a, an end user, either on the phone or if you're, if you're in the plant, just about every plant has somewhere where there's a hole, where there's a crack, where they've moved a piece of machinery that they have to patch. Uh, so a couple of things that you can talk to them about is one is this is less prep time. I mean, they really you basically have to clean out the hole. If it's greasy and oily, you're going to have to do a little bit more. But if it's pretty clean, you basically just have to back it out. Um, it is self-priming, it can go down to 45 degrees. So it's not a multiple step where you have to do one thing today and another thing tomorrow. You can do it all at one time. Uh, and since it is a, a it's called an exothermic cure, it generates heat when you mix it together. The deeper the hole, the bigger the hole, the quicker it cures. So if you have a six inch deep hole that's like a you know, gallon sized paint can, that, something that deep, in about an hour, hour and a half, it's going to be hard. I mean, it will be fully cured. When it's spread out over a larger area, thinner, it takes a little bit longer. But still, you can get it back into about one and a half to four hours, depending on how, how deep it is. Very, uh, very durable. Excuse me. Great for forklifts. Great for a lot of abrasion. Uh, if you have heavy-duty chemicals like a battery charging area or something that's real corrosive, we have other versions that are more chemical resistance chemical resistant, but this one has, from a general standpoint, it'll, it'll repel just about anything as long as we don't get into real funky, corrosive chemicals. And that gives you a little bit of an idea of you know, how you apply it. That's what it looks like. It looks sort of like cement, except it's uh, it travels a lot smoother. All of our products are, are made for in-house plant personnel to apply. So they can look like a champ. That's that's our goal is to make them look good for their boss, right? Uh, so the the little small glass beads that are in that aggregate, as well as the round sand, when they trowel it out, it trowels really smooth. So even uh, really novices can, can look good. Gives you a little bit of coverage. Um, the key thing here is the pot life. It's 30 minutes. That's at 72 degrees. Um, it's very important that when customer mixes this together, they're ready to go. You can't mix this together, leave it in the bucket and say, all right, let's go have a smoke and we'll grab a sandwich and we'll come back. You'll have a boat anchor, okay? <laughs> once once you mix it together, you got to be ready to put it out. So make sure, uh, you know, make, make sure they're aware of that. And that, that, like I said, it is at 72 degrees, so when it's 90 degrees, it's probably half that, okay? Because the, the product's already warm the environment's already warm and you're generating more heat, it cuts that uh, it cuts that cure time or that pot life down in half. Another thing too, some people don't realize they'll store it in the back of a pickup truck. You know, it's been sitting out in the parking lot all day and now when they're ready to use it, they go out and get it and bring it into the plant. Yeah, well the plant's 72 degrees. Well, it's been sitting out in the 95 degree sun for eight hours. The temperature of the material is 90 something or 100 degrees. So that's definitely going to affect that. That's just something to know if anybody ever calls you and says, oh, you know, we mix it together and it cooked off in five minutes. Yeah, you, can, you can ask some of those questions about, okay, where'd you store it? You know, how, where, where was it beforehand? This is a little bit of uh, information on our competitors. Long story short, without boring you all the details, we beat them in every category. I mean, from, from a durability standpoint to it gets uh, up to its compressive strength quicker. You can turn around quicker. It doesn't require a primer, that kind of stuff. And you are going to put it down by trial. And there's two different sizes, three, three and a half gallon and uh, the two gallon kit for, for smaller areas. You know, it, it's going to be, you can't, half, you can't mix half a, a kit. So if they really don't have that much, you can go with a smaller one. But once you mix it up, you don't want to be splitting the resin and the hardener and trying to do half the sand. You want to mix it all at once and put it down. Not every project is going to need two and a half, three gallons of, of material. Uh, 
this product is the, the product I just showed you, sort of brother. It's a uh, it's a cartridge, and it doesn't have the aggregate; it just has the hardener and the uh, and the resin to it. It is a one to one ratio, and it mixes in the tooth, so you can you can use half a tube and not not you know use it all up. Um, it cures 45 minutes to an hour. It can be recoded. It can be used for anchoring. Um, it is twice as strong as concrete from the compressive strength standpoint. It's really really durable. Um, Give you an idea where you can use it. You use it vertically. You use it on a wall. You can use it overhead on a ceiling. This can go actually underwater. We've applied it underwater. Uh, it can be used to anchor handrails. You know, in, in the plant, a lot of handrails get rickety and they can't. They're not moving a door. They have to do something to fix it. This product can be used to as an anchor into the wall. You can you can even take a bolt and spray some WD-40 on it. And after you stick it in, you know, let's say you put the product in the hole here, you, you take the bolt that's been treated into that, let it sit for 45 minutes, gets hard, you can back it out. It'll thread itself. So that's that's pretty neat for, you know, if you're anchoring something into the floor or to the wall, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty unique. This is something that every plant should buy. Uh, you know, you're talking about cracks. Every plant has cracks. Every plant has a machine that's been moved they've hammered the bolts hopefully into the concrete but there's still a little chunk or a lot of chunks uh, this product does really well in that environment I had a, a, a customer that was wanted to try it and I gave him a tube of it it was a food plant and in two months they bought 300 tubes and these sell for about 30 bucks a tube so this isn't just a little four dollar caulk that you're gonna sell I mean you can make some money off it These are a few sort of homeowner shots, but you can get the point. We can use that in industrial application where there's a crack. We can fix it. There's not a whole lot of flexibility to this product. There's a little bit of flexibility. It'll give a little bit, but it gets really, really hard. Uh, if, we're, if we're in a joint in the floor that's going to be moving, we're going to use our flexible joint seal. This is more for something that's, that's pretty rigid. It's not going to move. We're trying to patch. Again, the thrilling technical information. The only thing less boring than watching paint dry is learning about the technical information. Uh, but this is something you need to know. But this is how we sell the product. It comes in tubes, and then you can order more static mixers and the caulk gun. You may already sell a similar caulk gun, and that's fine. Uh, I wouldn't go with the regular ratchet one. Uh, you'll have forearms that look like Popeye. Uh, the one that we sell has the sort of the heavy-duty spring it's just it's a lot easier to do that two component uh, epoxy. Are there any questions on the turbo creep? Are you are you all selling anything like that right now? No. But they don't have to use that one that particular one at all at one time like they would. Correct. Okay. They can use half half of it. That's right. It only mixes, you know, in the in the tube, it mixes as it comes out. Now you're gonna have to replace those tubes. Because once it goes, whatever leaves the tube and gets into the static mixer, you're done. But if you put the cap on top, you can keep the rest till, you know, the next time. Everybody online with us? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Uh, this is brand new product called Steel Tech. This is a stainless steel enriched coating system. Okay, so we've got, we're going to have to talk about two different products, uh, and I don't know, obviously the guys online can't see it, but I've got a couple samples I'm going to pass around. Uh, this is pretty unique um, technology compared to what's in the marketplace right now. The first one I'm going to talk about is the epoxy. If you're familiar with uh, Rust Volume 9100 epoxy, that's the, that's the base platform for this product. Except we've taken 218L stainless steel uh, particles and incorporated it into the coating system. So and I'll pass this one around first. The cool part about it is you can use any of our existing activators with this system. It's VOC compliant in all 50 states or 48 states, I guess. Um, 
and uh, very, very versatile. You can use an immersion, low temp activator, fast drying activator. Uh, very, very durable. Um, the urethane, and you'll notice the urethane's a little different, okay? Um, the, the color is just a little bit off. They're, they're not the same. Since we're using a natural um, element, I guess, for lack of a better term, the, the color is a little bit different from the two products. They're both um, will stick to marginally prepared surfaces. So as long as you get all the loose rust off, you can put both of these products directly <coughs> to rusted metal. Uh, and the urethane, the, the unique thing is uh, it's single component. So you don't have to add a hardener. It's, it's, it's a single component product, low odor. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about. You know, we they use a lot of different type of people or type of facilities use it. You know, Dr. Pepper will probably be one you want to talk to about this. Uh, food and beverage and pharmaceutical plants <laughs> do a ton of this because they are always getting inspected and they want it to look like stainless. Even if they don't have stainless, they want it to look like stainless. As far as the VOCs, you can see the um, the epoxy is 340 to 250, depending on what activator you use. On the uh, the polyurethane, it's it's under 500, it's for something, which here in Pennsylvania sort of makes you a little nervous, so that's high VOC. However, the way it's categorized, if you look at the next line, the coating classification, it's categorized as a metallic finish. So you can get a higher VOC out of that as opposed to an industrial maintenance coating. Um, I think from a, from a ease of application, the single component product is, is really is really cool. I mean, that should get your customers excited that they can get that look in the same component, direct to metal. Because uh, the main competitor we're going against here is Steel It. Have you guys ever heard of? Do you guys sell any Steel It now? No. Okay. Well, that's good. I, I won't go into it too much. But basically, they have three steps. You know, you have to do a primer, top coat, or a base coat and top coat. Or ours is a single component. So we're going to save them. If you have any customers. We're going to save them time and money. From a performance standpoint, the one on the left is good. The one on the right is bad. Uh, corrosion resistance, that's what rust is all about. We protect assets. And uh, the, the exciting part of this, this new product is this steel, I guess, captures this category. I don't know how much of the market share they have, but they're, I guess they're sort of the drivers for the whole market. We outperform them in all these corrosion tests, and our price is like a third of what they're. I mean, it's it's less. They sell it in the 150, 180, 200 dollars a gallon area. We're like 125 and 90, so we're considerably less, and we we take less numbers of coats. Their polyurethane, for I know you're not selling, but I just sort of give you a little comparison in case you run into it in the field. They have a really really strong solvent odor, so when you open it up, you go. It smells like paint. I mean, somebody's doing some serious painting here. Ours, it's got a real low odor. So it's a lot easier for folks to do painting while there's folks in the plant. They don't have to wait till they have, have a shutdown. Uh, and in dry time, two to three hours versus eight. You know, when we're painting in a plant, they want to turn stuff around quick, right? They're, they're, they don't want it to wait. Uh, we can do it by brush roller and spray. And they only, uh, they can only do it by spray. And more importantly, since we want to stock like a million dollars of this here, we're in all your branches. Um, five year shelf life versus one year with a competitor. So that's that's the story to tell as well. There's a 500 hours in a salt fog test. Now, to give you a little idea, this panel is the same panel or the same kind of panel that we do these tests on. You make a scribe in it and stick it in a salt fog cabinet, basically. It's almost like an oven. And it accelerates weathering, so it's, it gives us an idea of how it's going to do in the in the real world. And 500 hours is a pretty long test. I mean, we go up to 1,200 hours sometimes, but it's a pretty good test. And the way we measure corrosion or an effective coating is once you scribe that and get down to the metal, how much does it creep away from that line? That tells you how, how good you're bonding to the steel and what kind of corrosion resistance you have. If it gets underneath, it's called rust undercutting. And you can tell there's, it not only creeps away from it, 
it's bubbling, it's failing all over the all over the substrate. So you can sell with confidence. One coat of ours versus three coat of theirs. So what that means to you, Vic, is a third of the cost, a third of the prep time, a third of the number of coats. And it really looks good. I mean, you can, when, when you're dealing with stainless, stainless steel tanks or <coughs> places that sort of have a pristine environment, <coughs> try to maintain that, a, a stainless steel coating can really um, accent that. You know, it's, it's really going to give them the ability to not spend money on stainless steel angle iron and everything else, but they can make it look like it is. So when they're having plant tours and they're bringing customers in, they can make it, uh, they can make it look pretty. And it can go on, one thing I didn't talk about is the substrates. It can go on pretty much anything. Um, one thing you do need to be aware of, <clears throat> since it is a natural, uh, hey Wes, can you hear me that? A natural uh, element, we'll, we make like 2,000 gallon batches at a time, okay? When, we, when it's time to go make a new batch, the, the color of the stainless might be a little different than the first batch because it's, you know, it's a mined or milled thing. So we have to make sure the customer knows, hey, let's say they buy 20 gallons this year. If, if they go back to just try to touch up one area, it may not exactly match because the, the, the flake is a little bit different. It's a, it's, a, it's a raw material issue. We just can't control that. So just so they know that, there might be a little bit difference. And you can tell the difference between the polyurethane and the epoxy. It also depends on the angle you're looking at it on. There, there is a little, it's not the exact same look. It's a different product. So we just have to be aware that you can't touch up on the other either. Just one limitation, but from a performance standpoint, it's, it's not an issue at all. And we're going to have a quiz on this afterwards <laughs> on all the product numbers, see if you're paying attention or not. I know it's riveting. Yeah. Uh, you folks are lucky enough to live in the OTC region, which is regulated by uh, the government for VOC so that, that our product can into the atmosphere. Uh, California is um, leading the pack in that they, um, they have the most restrictive in the country. You guys are second. Uh, with that in mind, we're developing more and more products that can be used not only here but also in California and throughout the country. So this product. Uh, is, is brand new. It is a water-based epoxy hybrid primer, single component, so it does not need an activator. Very, very user-friendly. Uh, you can apply any top coat over top of it, alkyds, which is an oil base, enamel, uh, acrylics, epoxies, urethanes. It can be top coated with a variety of, of substrates. Uh, it can be applied on a variety of surface prep as well, whether it's sandblasted or it's pressure washed or sound rusted metal. And when I say sound rusted metal, that means it can have rust on it, but if you take a, a putty knife and you know scrape across it, if nothing comes off, then you're good. That's that's what a sound rusted surface is. It can have rust on it, but it can't have any loose rust. It's got to be uh, down to the where it's not flaking at all. It's got under 100 grams per liter of VOCs, which works in Orange County, California, which is the strictest in the country. So that's really, really uh, impressive. You can recoat it in an hour. Uh, with a plant that has a quick turnaround time, they don't want to be down, that's fantastic. Uh, the corrosion resistance, I'm going to show you some uh, a picture as far as how it does there. It is the, the best testing corrosion resistant primer that Rust Williams ever had. And that's saying something. We've got a lot of really good primers. Uh, and it, it has really increased the corrosion resistance of our entire coatings line if you use it underneath it. Uh, and you'll see a couple pictures that, uh, that bear that. Here you go. The top one, the top line are pictures of our products by themselves in 340 hour salt fog. Okay, with no primer. The, the line below is and this is oil-based enamel on the far left, uh, water-based uh, acrylic in the middle, 
and then the 5200 is our basically our price point acrylic on the right hand side and you can see the corrosion resistance that it that it's impacted is incredible I mean it really really performs well and if we go against uh, our competitors you know who do we compete against you guys compete against everyday Sherwin Williams right oh I can get that at Sherwin Williams for so and so well yeah you can look what you can get at Sherwin Williams for cheaper something that's going to corrode a lot faster than this so I know a good question to ask your customer is when's the next time you want to paint this most of them are going to say well never <laughs> I don't want to paint this ever again well it's going to cost you a little bit more to do it right but you're not going to have to do it you know nearly as often so from a performance standpoint it beats the crap out of Sherwin Williams uh, and anybody else for that matter I mean I use that that slide because that's probably one of our more prevalent uh, competitors so some bullet points when you're talking to your customers less downtime right you can uh, you can put it down a lot quicker application time it dries in an hour you can go out and have lunch and come back and recode it uh, also you know it's single component so you can use half a gallon put the lid back on it and use it later you don't have to mix it together uh, and really the, the the last line is huge because this is you know how we go to market we don't go to market saying we're the cheapest we're going to beat anybody's price that's not what Russ Williams is about uh, long-lasting durable corrosion protection we're about asset protection as you are you're trying to bring value to your customer it's easy to be the cheapest right we're trying to sell value give them something that nobody else can brush roll and spray you can have any color you want as long as it's red or gray <laughs> now I know this is the one you've all been waiting for. Uh, this product was introduced earlier this year. Uh, it was actually, th this is something that uh, Home Depot has one that's uh, very, very similar. The largest single new product introduction in Home Depot history, believe it or not. Um, this, is, this is a unique product that has status place. You're not going to sell it to everybody. But I think it's important that you, uh, you know, that you understand a little bit more about and how to sell it and where to sell it. Uh, this is a, a flexible coating. This is made to waterproof. This is made for, you know, roofs, gutters, HVAC. Uh, it can be used for really a variety of things. It's sort of like duct tape. Once guys buy it, I think first it's sort of like a, a curiosity. You know, what is this? But oh, I can use it for this. I can use it for that. Uh, we're going to have, uh, the, the last line on there is wrong, it says available in black. We do now have uh, clear and white, and there's going to be some tape coming out soon um, that will be used for, I guess, heavier duty applications that, where you have a, a seam or something that really needs extra protection. That's, that's going to be coming as well. And uh, yesterday, Sean, we were, we were in the branch, and he said, uh, he wanted. He had customers asking us to put it on the bottom of the boat, on the screen door. <laughs> commercial. Yeah, and uh, and that's sort of where this this started. Is this guy's? You've seen this commercial. Uh, we were approached by a customer and asked, you know, can you guys make something like that? And our R and D people dove into it and said, yeah, we can. So what's what's the difference? <coughs> what's the difference between the two? It's not the same thing. We do not make that. We are not affiliated with that guy in any way. The reality of it is, I know it's hard to believe, you can't believe everything that's on TV. Or the internet. Okay? Or the, well, no, internet, everything's true. <laughs> yeah. But TV, you really well, have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here to sort of back up what I'm talking about. But uh, it really doesn't weather well. You can't leave it outside by itself or it's going to crack. Um, you can't really top coat it with coatings because it bleeds through. Uh, it does stay soft and gooey, it runs. It just doesn't uh, work that well. Where ours stays smooth and flexible. You can get an even coat on it, you can recoat it. Um, you can build gaps, or, or uh, bridge gaps. You can see by this picture, this is the competitor on the left-hand side. 
Uh, that's called mud cracking in the paint industry. It looks sort of like the desert when it all dries out and get all those cracks on it. Ours is a continuous smooth film. There's a the price point. It's roughly seven bucks a can. Okay, is, is what your cost is. <coughs> oh wait, I'll go to the, over these. I'll come back to those questions in a second. From for a demo uh, perspective, sometimes you you see that uh, the thing on on the screen door, which I think yeah, it's definitely a bunch of crap. But you can do something similar and get a uh, a strainer. We've done this for shows, or, and then you coat it with a product and fill it up with water. And, uh, it's it's a great visual of hey, you know, it really does work. There's too many variables in that commercial with a boat. You know what I mean? I mean, but anyway. This is a great, great way. You can use any really kind of strainer, spray it on, fill it up with water, and uh, and let the customer have at it. I'm gonna go back to the questions real quick, and I want to hear from anybody uh, here or on the phone too, as far as questions they might have. But it is not just an un uh, automobile undercover, undercover, because we do have an auto automobile spray line or spray can line. It's not the same thing. It is a, a, a new product that was developed just to compete against this other one. <coughs> chemical resistance, the jury's still sort of out on that. Uh, mild chemicals, it's okay. Anything that's too funky, it's not. It's really made for water. Uh, and can you apply it to a wet surface? If you have a leak somewhere, a leaky pipe or whatever, can you just spray it on and it stops it and sticks? No. Okay, it's not made for that. you got to try to have it dry. It's got to be able to stick to something. Uh, that's the... That's the real scoop. You can't just, you know, spray it on a leaking leaking pipe and oh, all of a sudden it fixes it. Uh, how about questions from y'all? What what what? I know that's you've seen it probably in, in the in the showroom on the counter. I don't know how much you've sold of it, but have you got any feedback or you got any questions about this product? One at a time. <laughs> Okay, it's one of those things. That it's really a niche thing, you know. You have a need for it, or you don't, you know. And if somebody's got roof or gutter issues, or leak issues, it's perfect for it. Um, you know, just just know that we've got it. And keep your eye out for it. Anybody here have an iPhone? One. Okay. Well then, I'm gonna. This is your, this presentation is for you. An iPad. Okay. <laughs> well, good. It'll work with an iPad. <laughs> Their work have, phones are not are. We're, we're we're trying to incorporate it to other smartphones, but the, the iPhone seemed to be the platform that I don't know if it was easiest to do first, but there, it was the most popular. This is a an application from Rust Oleum that makes it easy to go in and convert a spray cabinet from competitors' products to Rust Oleum's ones. Okay, so you can take uh, take the barcode, take your take your phone, and bring up the app and scan the UPC code on the back and it will automatically convert it to the Rust-Oleum sales part and uh, you can populate it into a spreadsheet and email to outside, you can in, you know, mail it to your customer service person or inside salesperson, populate an order, do the whole thing from there. Uh, some of them, if, there, if it's a funky one that doesn't uh, come up, it will come up and say no match but here's you know, this is what we found it is. You know, it's XYZ purple fairy paint. You know what I mean? And you can, e you can email that to me, and then I can do the crossover for it. The cool thing about it, I know none of you guys have iPhones yet, but if you're thinking about getting a new one or, or keep this available when we get to a different uh, application platform, you can do it for anything with a UPC code. So you could go into a tool crib. Let's say you're running late and you want to go in and just sort of do an inventory order of what they need. You can go through and scan anything with a barcode, and it will populate a Excel spreadsheet, and you can put in four, I need four of these, five of these, five of these, six of these, boom, email it as you're walking out, and you're done. So, we are not a selfish company at rust -Oleum. This doesn't work on just ours, it works on everybody's. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat, especially if you, have, if you have to do that a lot. If you have a lot of uh, customers where you're doing some inventory, management type things, um, it could really benefit you to, to get that application. Uh, let's see how we're doing, okay, we're doing right. Concrete saver. We sell paint, we're a coatings company. That's what we want to do every day. 
great cans, gallons. Sometimes though, uh, the application just, we, we can't apply a coating. Uh, this product, it, it gives us sort of a, a, a foothold into a different market. It's uh, called Safe Step. They're fiberglass reinforced uh, stair treads, step covers, uh, products that, you know, a plant does not have time to wait to prep it, to coat it, to let it cure. You know, they either have a safety issue, they're having an uh, inspection, a plant tour, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, and they have to get it done now. These products can help um, can help do that. Where minimal downtime, you can you can install it. It's a lot better than tape. I mean, we all go through that all the time. No, <laughs> putting down tape, putting down tape on stairs. Oh my God! Um, some of those companies have made a fortune off that. You just have to redo it. And it has excellent chemical resistance. I mean, it's not just uh, for show. It has really good slip resistance as well as chemical resistance. These come in pre-cut, pre-determined sizes. Uh, there's a ton of different sizes though. <coughs> this one, we're gonna talk about, I think four different type products here. This is the full stair tread. And you can see from the picture on the right, you know, as far as the dimensions of it, you have the black on, on, the, uh, on the tread and then the little uh, yellow on the, uh, the bull nose part of it. Very, very durable. Okay, so all you really have to do for surface prep here is sweep it off, you know, make sure there's nothing underneath it, any kind of screw or nail or whatever that's going to stick up that would prevent it from laying flat. You can use a uh, adhesive on the back. I recommend TurboCrete um, adhesive epoxy because then I get sales credit for it. But if, if not, you can use a uh, construction adhesive, works well. And basically screw it and glue it. You're gonna you're gonna glue it down and screw into the into the substrate. Um, that holds it best. Can you get away with just glue? Probably, uh, depending on what it is. On brick, I wouldn't because it's not it's not smooth. <coughs> but some concrete you probably could. But the best application is to screw it uh, and glue it. We also have landing covers. So instead of having to coat a landing, we have sheets cover the whole thing four by four uh, there's actually different there's different sizes of that as well gray and black and also just the just the stair treads on the front the yellow ones. cool thing about this one is safety guys always have money okay when you go to a plant you're calling on the facilities guy or whoever oh budget this budget that you know when you're paying attention walking in you look at that sign that says it's been five days since the last recorded accident, let's go call the safety guy because something's happened or he's going to have to address it, right? Slips and falls are the number one cause of workplace injuries. <clears throat> so let's go talk to him about anti-slip. You know, if he's not going to code it, we've got some answers uh, with, with safe step. You can do aisleways. You know, they don't have time to shut down, to sandblast, to do all that kind of stuff. You can go all the way down an aisle way with this stuff. It's customizable too. It's five, they're fiberglass sheets, but you can take a circular saw and you can you can cut them to whatever your your size is. I have a customer right now that has big pieces of equipment, and they have stair stairs that go up to uh, you know metal stairs that go up into the cab. <coughs> Excuse me, and they're bent and they're they're uh, slick and you know they're not giving them any traction, so they're going to take the standard step and they're going to cut it with a circular saw so they can mount it right onto the side of the machinery. So it's versatile. You don't have to be limited by just the size that we have. You can you can go around and uh, and adjust. There's a few different shots of obviously where you can use it. This is a really good picture too, as far as to see the you can see how aggressive the profile is. This isn't a little sand. Uh -oh. It's not just like a a sprinkle of sand. It's got a pretty aggressive profile. You could. When it snows and rains, I mean, it will give you really, really good grip. <coughs> Very aggressive. And that'd be a nice little sale because these things—they're not cheap. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make some money on it. This thing's getting possessed.
marking paint. All right, any, any questions about the safe step? Hopefully there's a market for you there. Um, it's funny how when you start presenting it to people, no mess, sort of no muss, no fuss type deal. We don't have to go through this all, all this whole, you know, get MSDSs approved and, and sandblasting and painting and all that. It's, so there definitely is a, a market for it. Do you have like a cutout or a sample piece? I I can get you one. I had some and I gave them all out. So I'm trying to get more. Can you just, yeah, get us a sample. Yeah, piece. we can get a sample. Marking paint. How much marking paint do you all sell? Do you sell a little bit? Comes and goes. We've got uh, we've got a couple new products coming out here. One is a uh, it's a marking wand for for locators. The, the thing about this one is it's I know it's not too sexy and exciting, but for, to, for the guys that use this all the time, uh, you know they're putting flags down to mark gas lines or cable lines or whatever. So you can hold your flags here. With that, we also put a punch on the front so they can punch a hole uh, and put the flag in it, um, as well as do the uh, uh, carry the paint can. Uh, just sort of a new a new thing. There's also um, I don't know. You want to talk about the new delivery system a little bit? There's not a whole lot of information about this. We just came out with it, but um, it's basically a bag instead of can an aerosol. So you know instead of crushing it. It can be recyclable, so that's a really big product that we're going to come out with. Again, not a whole lot of information yet. Um, the more information I get, the more information I'll share with you guys. But um, yeah, that's just a general outline of uh, what that's going to be. So yeah, it's new, brand new technology, and I, we couldn't really talk to you guys about it when you're in Vernon Hills because it wasn't. They're still trying to finalize it, but it's essentially taking the can out of the game and using bag type technology where you can carry more of it and there's not the disposal issue. So from an environmentally stand friendly standpoint, it's perfect. So for municipalities, for phone companies, for locating companies, uh, that's, that's going to be a big deal. Especially everybody's trying to go green. It is $80 million a year market. And there's a new, we have a new marking paint just aerosol marking paint. This is a price point product. This whole category is price. Um, very, very competitive. We can be competitive as anybody. Um, this product is made more for the construction industry. Okay, People that are marking dirt, gravel, uh, soil that is going to get dug up. But it needs to stay on top, right? It needs to uh, not penetrate into the soil so, so they can see what they're doing. Main difference between the two, as you'll see on the left, our precision line is a lot sharper. You can write numbers and letters a lot better. Uh, the construction marker marking is just a little bit wider and duller. This is what we're going to have a quiz on, Vic, so make sure you're paying attention. The competitive atmosphere. Uh, no, the the you know the way we go to market, we try to we try to add value, not just say we're better. Well, why are you better? If you look at the fourth line down where it says practical coverage, <clears throat> this is how, how far we go versus our competitor. Okay, so our construction line product goes you know considerably less than a regular precision line, but it goes more than the Cryline Cry Quick Mark, which is our competitor. So we can match a price or maybe even be a little bit higher and say, hey, we go you know 20% more, but we're the same price. And then a lot more than the airboat construction, uh, nearly double airboat construction product. So we do have uh, definitely a story to tell. Uh, we have good fade resistance as well, uh, because you know all these all these colors mark something. Stay critical. You know if it's a gas line, if it's a water line, if it's, a, if it's electrical line. So you kind of want to hold that color for a long time. Usually 28 days is what. Uh, is standard and uh, this is against brand K you can figure out which one that is uh, how it looked at the beginning and after 14 days and their their colors practically totally gone so if this is a critical line that's not supposed to be dug up you know I think white is general excavation and orange is like gas if it fades from orange to white oh yeah this is excavation we dig it up it can be a big problem 
and this is after 21 days. And this is Airbo, or I'm sorry, this is brand A. Did I say that out loud? This one, you have a little more choice than just gray and uh, red. We do have several colors in it. Now, I know I'm going kind of fast. I'm just trying to make sure I hit, I hit my mark here. This is, this is the home stretch. You're almost to the donuts, all right? <laughs> uh, we have been dabbling or talking about this or rust oleum for 12 years, about getting into the lubricants and, and sealants market. Well, we're here. We're, we're into it now. Uh, we did a lot of market research going into it, talked to a lot of people that use lubricants, and uh, we haven't even introduced this line yet, okay? We did this research like six months ago. 42% of the people we asked, <coughs> excuse me, already thought that they bought Rust-Oleum lubricants, and we don't even have them. So that's kind of a good position to be in. Hopefully we can go in there and uh, uh, snatch that up. But you can see the how they sort of grade this. As far as this category, product performance is number one. So whether it's an LPS, a CRC, or a spray-on, or whoever, really it comes down to does it work, okay? Brand trustworthiness. Rust-Oleum has 96% brand awareness in the USA. That's higher than Budweiser. That's saying something. We do have a great name. I'm not to brag, but it's great to work for a company that has a great reputation. <clears throat> so putting those first two together, we, we're really optimistic that this, this product line is going to take off and we're hoping that you guys can uh, jump on board as well. <clears throat> There's going to be 10 uh, main products coming out initially and this is what they are. Um, I know this is going to be more Bob kind of converting some of this stuff over but please think about it if you have any customers that are using a lot. Uh, we'd love to try to get the opportunity to convert them over. You know, brake cleaner is a pretty, pretty big one. So is the uh, dry PTFE. Uh, and you know, it, it depends on the industry what they're using. But we've got uh, really a full line. And uh, oh, there's the strong. See, ninety-six percent. I wasn't lying. It's on a slide, so it's true. <laughs> uh, ours is a bigger can. So we're we're, we're going to go. We're going with the hard hat size, uh, sixteen ounce. Pricing should be competitive. Um, if not, I'll do what I can to get us competitive. I mean, that's, we want to sell this line, we want to get out there, I'm not going to let 10 cents a can, whatever it is, you know, affect us. Let's, let's go get some business. Please bring me the opportunity, you know, I'll try to, uh, I'll try to meet it. Uh, three, 360 degree spraying is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, but it just means you can spray upside down, sideways or whatever, and it doesn't stop spraying. Okay, and, and remember too, I don't know, going back to our regular spray cans, uh, we've, we're adding this 360 degree spray tip on all of our aerosol cans. <clears throat> if you ever have a customer that does not empty a can or gets something clogged, we have a money back guarantee on that. So they can bring it back to you and we'll replace it. So, you know, if they ever call and complain or whatever, just say, well, if it happens again, you know, save a couple if you get a couple and then we'll try to replace the case. But if not, we'll do it one by one. It's, it's the same thing for this. And thank you for your time and attention. There's one more, actually. Um, how about any questions? How about questions or issues while I'm trying to get this last little thing up for you? Plus, you have Wes is going <coughs> to yes, wrap it up. Can you guys on the phone still see my screen? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we gotta do that. <laughs> it's a magic trick. Watch closely. This is one that's gonna blow your mind. And Wes is gonna so I'm gonna Oh you have it on your laptop? No. Well I'm just gonna do a different one because I can't do that one. Did you email it? You didn't email it to me, did you? No, it's a file size. Get that way. Get that way. <laughs> Excuse me, ship this All right, well, I'll start uh, explaining the what. Um, it's an innovative spray-on coating. Um, it's super hydrophobic. That's what sets us apart from our competitors. There's no other brand like this that is super hydrophobic, which basically means it's afraid of water. Yeah, I know. 
it disregard the bucket in the back. What is it going so fast for? Um, this thing's all over the place. That's how it is. It gives it a little bit of cloudy haze. So. For those times where you got to pour turkey gravy on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> or motor oil, you know. You did what? I think work gloves, work boots, um, electronics. Yeah, there's a... Bear with me here. There's there's some really cool applications here that you love the shoes. The shoes is a cool one. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. But from an OEM and industrial standpoint, if you're thinking of anybody that uses electronics or has a wet process, just their whole person. Well, we got umbrellas. Oh, you can drop yourself on the toilet. Mm -hmm. They warned us <laughs> about pork chocolate syrup. Yeah, they said he won't. Yeah. You feel like you've got a pork chocolate syrup on the syrup Yeah. And yeah. you know how prickly those things are and they grab at everything? Everybody talks to you like that. I don't know. You must I've done something wrong. Earned it. Life. It's not just him, it's just <laughs> drop it. So we're still he bought the license of this product from that guy for ninety nine years. He was basically a tech guy, you know, he didn't know how to get it to market, so we're still only bought it for ninety nine years. You say he was from the old. He's from the old, yeah. Right here in Lancaster. Yeah. You yeah. got a patent for twenty eight years on it. Oh. And they, they coded the gate side of the phone. So. Well, I got the sound on it. Alright, one more. Bear with me. This one will blow your mind, especially if you're a mom or a dad. We've seen, all these. We've seen this before. Mother. Mother. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Your dog too. Here you go. Yeah. Watch this. Oh yeah. Oh come on. Let me. That is freaky. Couple of pants. It's a fabric pick. That's crazy. Where'd you get those socks at? <laughs> this is Vic on the weekends. You're wondering what he does with his time. <laughs> Tip throwing, tip toeing through the tulip. He, he sells car on the weekends. That's oh. right. <laughs> wow. Cool. All right, I'm buying some. Isn't that cool? And hey, the bottom of that shoe was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. It's eighty-five dollars an ounce. We're get so much shit for tomorrow. We need that for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Right? But that's exactly that's exactly right. You start thinking about places where you can use this on golf club, uh, on uh, grips, on golf clubs, on your on your golf gloves. The NFL is <coughs> testing it on footballs, so when they have rainouts, the balls aren't wet. Um, Boeing's testing it on wings, on aircraft for de-icing because water water can't stick to this product. 
My daughter can honestly take it to school and sell the crap out of it because all they care about is their clean sneakers. Yeah. Like they don't, they get upset if they get even remotely dirty. Well, I'm sorry, Daryl. Go ahead. He's going to tell Well, actually, yeah, the, the Eiffel Tower actually uses products. Um, the ice is falling down from the Eiffel Tower and hurting people. Yeah, watch it. And, you know, they put this on and ice wasn't forming so they didn't have to worry about it. So it's also just safety. But yeah, some other facts. It's uh, 30 minutes after final coat, so it's got a quick dry time, low odor, uh, UV stable. Uh, the durability, it all really depends. If you're if you're putting it on your shoes, it could last to about a week because you know you're constantly using it. But if you're gonna put it on like a satellite dish, we're gonna get water on it. That could last a while. I'm not really sure how how long, but it, it will last you a couple of months to a year. Would be my guess. So. What's the price? Yeah. Do we have a price yet? For this? Right now, it's being introduced this week to Home Depot. Home Depot gets it first. Um, they're doing a 12 ounce can. This is a two component process. It's a, it's a base coat you spray on, you wait 30 minutes, and then you spray the top coat on. Okay? So it's packaged in a two can case. Um, what I saw from the initial thing is that is going to run $17.99 at Home Depot. Okay? Our cans are going to be the bigger ones. We're making this in the industrial hard hat cans, so they're bigger. I would guess we're probably going to be in the $20, $22 a kit range. Um, down the road, we're going to be making it in gallons. Uh, I heard At first, I heard it was going to be about 400 bucks a gallon. Uh, now, I've heard it's probably going to be closer to two. So that, that's still sort of in the works, but it's great for OEMs. I mean, I've been at tractor manufacturers that have a lot of electronics up underneath that get exposed to, to moisture and water and mud. Um, we've got a ton of videos on this. You're going to see a lot more uh, commercials on TV starting in July. This is like the largest um, launch we've had in like forever. $8 million, I think. Isn't that what they you remember, Jim? $8 yeah. million, I think, is what we're spending. Uh, you, can, you can literally, we've got videos. We'll be able to show Wes to you guys here, but I apologize. We didn't get it downloaded to show guys online. But... Uh, Basically, cinder block is coated half with it, half without. Take a, a bucket of muddy water and throw it against it, and it just separates. It sticks to the one, and it doesn't even doesn't even stick to the other side. So when you have wash down areas at plants, food plants, stuff can't stick to it. Um, it's really really unique. So <laughs> be thinking about anybody that's an OEM that has electronics or some you know has their their most common mode of failure in their product. In the field, what do you guys have to deal with? Because I was at one, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, believe it or not. They made tractors, but they also had a sister company that made automatic milkers, you know, for, for cows. And they said they had constant moisture problems, and all that's computerized now, and they can't keep, or they have a problem keeping circuit boards dry. This, this is perfect. And I told them, this is before I found out about the product, <laughs> it's about 400 bucks a gallon, and they didn't even. They're like, okay, you know, because it solves a problem. Price isn't going to be an issue. Some of the commercials you're going to see are really, really cool. I mean, literally, we take, you know, like the the, um, uh, the sneaker thing is really cool, but we take hammers and dip them in concrete and pull them out at the same time. And one's totally coated with concrete, and one is totally clean. Uh, same thing with work gloves. Uh, it, it's it's really, really neat technology, and. Uh, we think it's. I think our biggest problem is going to be having enough inventory to fill all the orders. Honestly, because um, Home Depot placed an opening order a couple weeks ago, and it was huge, 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 huge. So that's it on the. So I mean that's. Um, coverage. Coverage? No, it's, it's it is very thin. I'm going to guess it's probably going to go about 800 to 1,000 square feet a gallon. So it's it's thin. It's not perfectly clear. Okay. There's not, um, uh, it's going to have a little bit of a haze to it. I actually brought a, uh, a panel, if you guys want, when we break, if you want to look at it and pour some water on it. Uh, just so you know that I'm not pulling your leg. And we can pour it on when we take a break. You guys can see what it looks like and what it does. So. This is the newest. This is coming out this week to the marketplace. So you may see it in a big box store. We get it. Industrial side gets it on the 15th of June.
So we have product already made, ready to go. So yeah, we're waiting on a price to give them. I mean, it, it's you know it's one of those things. We're ready to sell. We've been we found out about this in December, and they showed us all the stuff. We're like, oh my god, I can't wait. And then we've been chomping at the bit. So it's good that we're at the end of the tunnel. You know, but once we get pricing and you know all that kind of stuff, we can send it out and um, hopefully start. Selling, selling a bunch of it. So thanks for your time, guys. Any questions from online or, or in here? You have sell sheets on all the new products. Yes. I can email those to Jim and let him get it out to you.